Outside the village of Jadugora, a few miles from the town of Jamshedpur in India, kids play football in the fields. Their friends watch from the sidelines cheering them on, but they don't join in. If you take a closer look, you'll see Munna. He's eight. He can barely walk. His legs and feet, misshapen, twisted, are giving away beneath him. The boys next to him cannot stand at all. Their limbs lie crumpled beneath their bodies, misshapen by a mysterious disease. They are the unlucky ones. What happened to them? The answer to that is the subject of a powerful documentary made by Sarab Vishnu, a native of Jamshedpur, who wanted to tell the world what happened to the children of Jadugora. It's called Tailing Pond. Sarab joined us at Desi Collective to tell us about his film and share his experience making it. Hi Sarab and welcome to Desi Collective. My name is Meera Kaimo and I'm here with Anjana Nagarajan Bhutani to find out about the story of Jadugora. Hi, good morning. So nice to meet both of you. It's, a, it's really a pleasure. Uh, it, where are it, you? I am uh, uh, in a small town called Jamshedpur. It is very close oh, to yeah. where the story lies, Jadugora. Yeah. So what happened to the people of Jadugora? The story goes back to 1951, when the government of India discovered uranium reserves in Jadugora. Uranium is used to make nuclear weapons. It was a fortunate find for India, a country trying to assert itself as a global power by developing its own nuclear weapons program after independence. Jadagura in eastern India, in a state now known as Jharkhand, is the ancient home of tribal people who've lived off the land for centuries. But after it was built in 1967, the mining by the government-owned Uranium Corporation of India has taken a devastating toll on the health and lives of the villagers of Jadugora. In Tailing Pond, Saurabh investigates the horrifying effects of uranium poisoning and the refusal of a government to acknowledge its role in this man-made plague. Tailing Pond refers to the pools that store uranium waste. As slurry from the ponds began to seep and contaminate the soil and groundwater, exposure to this highly toxic radioactive waste began to destroy families living by the uranium plant. Thousands of children in the villages began to fall ill and die. Women had painful pregnancies that resulted in stillbirths. Babies were born with birth defects and children who survived began to develop skeletal deformations that were fatal. The villagers of Jadagora paid an awful price for the success of India's nuclear program. Tailing Pond is their story. Um, sort of. I spoke to my cousins who yes. grew up in Jamshedpur, and as you can imagine, they said they had not heard the story at all. Um, yes. What is the? Uh, can you maybe first do a quick synopsis about the uh, about your documentary for our viewers? Sure. Uh, the synopsis of the film, uh, you know, revolves around the six families whose life has been. Um, uh, whose life has been difficult because of the uranium mining that is happening in around Jadukoda. That is basically the synopsis of the film. And then we also see a little bit of history as to, you know, when the operation started and uh, what is happening right now and what are people going through. I found Jadukoda a very, very powerful film about the village and the story of its tribals and especially the heartbreaking plight of what happened to the children. And it struck me that when the Bhopal gas explosion occurred at Union Carbide in 1984, the whole world was watching. And even today, some 35 years later, it's still being covered. But Jadagora seems like a silent tragedy. Mainstream news runs occasional stories on it, but nothing has changed for the villagers. So tell us what drew you to Jadagora and why did you think your film would make a difference? Uh, what drew me to Jadigora is because I found the story very compelling and uh, when I found the story it was hard for me to believe that it actually was a true story. Um, uh, the more I research I started to do, the more uh, you know disturbing news I started to receive. And then it was hard to believe all that sitting so far in New York. So I took a, fl I took a flight and I came down to the place. Uh, 
My father was once posted as a security personnel in Jadagora. He was the superintendent of police uh, yeah, for Jadagora police station. And he told me about this story when I was first trying to figure out what I want to do as my first film, which topic I wanted to choose. So I started meeting uh, families over there. I started going to their houses. I pulled up a couple of um, local networks and they allowed me to uh, interview them just formally, like no cameras and stuff. And then I, I was convinced that there is an issue. And being a local boy, I was born and raised up here and I was never aware of all these issues for such a long time. And it was very surprising to me when I, when I was about to make a movie to, 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 to know that the problem lies right where I was born. And that kind of sealed the, the matter for me. I thought that, you know, if not me, then who else would be the right fit to choose this topic? Sarah told us it took about five years and over 160 rolls of film to make Tailing Pond. But he says it wasn't an easy experience. I mean, you know, this is an issue which is which is hard to watch. I mean, um, like I said, I had 160 hours of footage. My first cut was hour and a half, and then I could not sit through it. And then I reduced it to one hour and I could not sit through it. And then me and my editor decided to make it a short film because it's just so hard to soak it in. It just, it's just a lot. So if I'm, unfortunately, all the kids are not alive, but you'll find many such kids in Jadugora. And you'll also find many women who are in particularly, um, you know, they have uh, uh, several kind of issues where, uh, you know, they have birth defects, they have uh, uh, troubles during pregnancy, and some, sometimes they have stillborn children. And they are then, then these miners who go to the mine. And, you know, there, there is so many different variants to the same problem. I have just focused my issue on kids because, you know, mom, when I saw this kid, something, something moved inside me. And, um, you know, I said that I'm going to make this movie all about kids. And I went all over the kids. So, Saurav, tell us, why would uh, your film make a difference after all these years? I think well, my film will make a difference because I'm very committed. Uh, the story needs to be told. And um, I think I, our country, Indians, are ready to talk about social issues and separate it from politics, which is very important. Uh, what has been happening for a very long time in our country is everything is mingled with politics and then it gets lost into politics and then the real uh, issue which is lying doesn't get attention and people don't get help so i have tried to uh, you know keep my film and myself as far from any kind of political view and i go straight uh, into what could have done and what was not done and I think, I hope, uh, you know, people like it, people, uh, you know, um, talk about it and maybe some new policy or some kind of reform can be done, which could help this place. American actress Cynthia Nixon, who is known for her stellar performance in numerous Hollywood films, including Sex and the City, provides the voiceover for Tailing Pond. We were curious how Saurav managed to rope her in to be the narrator. Um. Uh, why did you choose uh, Cynthia Nixon as your narrator? Uh, what impact do you imagine that this American voice will add to a very Indian story? Uh, is it because you expect to bring more traction for the story outside India? Well, I'll tell you a funny story, a backstory. Uh, so I hunted uh, for a voice for one year. I started, uh, you know, I started going to all these big talent agencies, UTEA and uh, WME and uh, CAA. I was in talks with Sonam Kapoor from UTA. Sonam and we spoke on the phone for I think 25, 30 minutes. She promised to do the movie and then she felt that the movie was very political. I tried to convince her that it was not political and uh, we are not discussing politics. And at that time she was not convinced, um, she backed out. I was also in talks with Irfan Khan uh, through his manager and Irfan also promised to do the film, but then his health deteriorated when he was last shooting in um, in South India. And then his manager conveyed his regards, saying that you know the health would not allow Irfan to. So at that point of time, I started to feel that our Indian talent are scared to you know bring this up and and give their voice to these kids because they don't want to get in any kind of trouble. And I was not thinking about trouble. I was thinking about only how to successfully incorporate every kind of help that would 
bring some kind of recognition to these kids. And then my talent agent at UTA, she uh, gave me the name of Cynthia Nixon. Before uh, Cynthia Nixon, I went to Mark Ruffalo. I went to so many people. I wasted one year just trying to bring my important voice to the kids. And finally, Cynthia, and she came on board and she did a wonderful job, as you can see. And uh, I'm very happy with her. So the, 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 I did not try to give it an American voice. I could create more traction in the Western countries. I just to give somebody who people can trust and people like them, whether they're Indian or they are non-Indian, it didn't matter. And after trying to get an Indian talent for such a long time, seven, eight months, nothing happened. I was like, it's hard <laughs> to convince yeah. our own people what I'm trying to do because they might not believe me. Yeah, they will be like, oh, this guy's trying to just get famous, maybe. <laughs> Who knows, you know. Well, um, how easy was it to persuade the families that you featured to tell their story? Why did you or how did you get them to trust you when they've been ignored by people for decades? It was not easy. It was it was very hard. Um, we have to understand that they not these families. So many other families have been covered by mainstream media so many times that they have continuously felt that something would be done and nothing got done about it. In fact, they were, uh, they were, they experienced more pressure from the corporation and they were very scared. So when I approached them, they're like, huh, another guy, you know, trying to put us on camera and what is this guy going to do? And uh, I told them that, look, I was born in this place and uh, my father once was posted in your police station and a lot of people knew my father and my father was a very good officer. He was a good cop. And that brought me into limelight. And then I could not bring help to them for five years. You know, I started shooting the movie in 2015 and then I did some more shooting in 2016. So I have over 160 hours of footage. So it's not like I turned on some magic trick and, you know, something is happening. I mean, still we have the movie and it's going to Oscars. We still don't know what's going to happen. Um, so it was hard for the families to, to trust me, but eventually they did because I think they had no other option. Uh, I cannot even imagine um, any family in being that position and somebody comes along asking for help. I mean, you know, what options do you have? You have to keep trusting people and, you know, they put their trust in me. And I, I, I said to myself, I'm not going to break their trust. I'm trying, to, I'll try to do everything that is within my power to keep pushing this. And it took me five years to talk to you guys and, you know, bring more people on board where people can probably see what I'm trying to do and see for what it is, nothing more and nothing less. A clip in the film shows the company chairman claiming that the deformed children were not native to Jadakora, but rather imported from somewhere else. In the last 30 years, the government has refused to acknowledge its responsibility to the villagers, saying that radiation exposure does not affect health. So where does that leave Tailing Pond? We ask Sarah that question. And then tell us what is the outcome you hope for making this film? Do you hope to pressure the government to acknowledge this crisis and take steps? It's already won several awards and are you hoping to leverage the, the publicity to create more awareness? I definitely want to create more awareness. I mean, I think that's the number one issue. I mean, uh, think about it. You spoke to your cousin, it's a small world. He lives in Jamshedpur. I am from Jamshedpur. I'm sitting right now in Jamshedpur and they claim that they don't know about this issue. And I was just like them when he started out. I had no idea about this issue. It was so silent to me. And then it was very shocking. And there's a kind of resistance that people have built up around this issue that anybody who talks about the issue probably uh, is not a good citizen. And I think that is so incorrect because it's the other way around. I think we should talk more about it. I mean, I mean, the film is not against uranium mining. The film is not against uh, uranium energy. The film is against, uh, you know, all the practices that is causing all this humanitarian issue. I mean, you know, if, I mean, uh, the Uranium Corporation of India Limited is a very successful 
and a profit making company it's it's a corporation so it has it's not a non for profit so it works for profit and uranium is one of the most expensive products in the world and we have the biggest resources here so obviously the company is making money and you know if you look at the balance sheet of the company we'll see it 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 it, it gets rewarded very very handsomely so you know as a part of a csr the company can successfully not to just show up to the audience but come forward and take some responsibility and help out these people then we will see the company in a new light we will appreciate what the company is doing for these people rather than the company or any government entity trying to um, you know uh, take it in a negative light and get in the defended position immediately that this is an attack this is not an attack if we citizens don't talk about it then who else will i mean you know i don't think so anybody is more in a good place rather than myself because i i i was born here and i i keep coming back here my parents still live here and i love my town and uh I think you know I have all the right to ask this question to anybody who is in a position to to consider to see what could be done about these people and in my film you see only one tailing pond I have shown you one pond there is nine tailing ponds like that people live all around it and I know sitting from so far uh, you know people have continuously put this in a political light uh, it feels like you know it is all made a problem and it is all a propaganda it's not the six kids who were in the film who were in the film those those families that i picked none of the kids are alive right now and i watched those kids for 5 years in the in the editing room and one by one one by one i could not bring them help i can't even tell you uh what i felt just giving some money or bringing some food is is not going to help it's not going to help this issue this issue has been created in 50 years it took us five decades to come to this where there is no there is no going back now we have to work together for many 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 years before we can you know eradicate this horrible plague that has been inflicted upon this place it's going to take time tailing pond has been screened at numerous indian and international film festivals and won best film at both the new york indian film festival and the jaipur international film festival It's now officially in consideration for the 93rd Academy Awards in the documentary short category. So has the documentary been shown in India and if so what has been the response to it? So uh the documentary uh got selected at many many Indian film festivals I think I think over 15 Indian film festival couple of awards in Jaipur International Film Festival and some festival in in shimla and some festival in eastern india and uh, western india and calcutta and it won a lot of awards so uh people kept emailing me that you know they have seen the documentary and they don't know about this issue and they're very surprised but uh, you know they want to help and how can they help and so the, the response has been good um, you know i was trying to uh, generate awareness and i think i have scratched the surface only scratched the surface they uh, you know, which shots tv now on board probably we can take this to the bigger audience and more people can see so the response has been good uh, but i have just barely scratched the surface where can sure. our audiences see this movie is it available to watch via streaming uh, the movie is not available anywhere right now because of all the distribution uh, restrictions uh, but shots tv is planning a national premiere in india on all the prime cable channels so that will be uh, one of the ways to watch the film after that uh, you know we have lined up uh, you know a distribution in terms of uh, spod and vod and then uh, flights uh, and airlines and hotels and everything so the movie is being uh, the movie is made into a, a length which is widely acceptable in terms of you know even like small flights and stuff like that and hotels so it will be widely distributed but unfortunately it's not available on any platform to view right now what can we the citizens of the world but especially indians do to help the people of jadugara i think the first thing we need to do is we need to talk about it when we don't talk about it it becomes a propaganda it becomes a lie it becomes a myth but when we talk about it and when we discuss it then we can figure out for ourselves what is lies and what is not lies first thing will be to talk actively talk put it out there and let it you know sit through people and then people will figure out themselves 
tell what they need to do at step two when they have figured out what they have felt for themselves. I mean, you know, I, I, I can keep going on all night and it's not going to make a difference. I think it's the people like you and other people who need to really figure out for themselves how they want to tackle this issue. You know, uh, people need to figure out for themselves what they need to do to bring help. Talk, Kuru Jadu Gora, meet these families, pressurize the government, put it in the, the MPs need to raise this issue in the, uh, you know, whatever, whatever helps. But we need to uh, solve this as a domestic issue, as our issue, not an outsiding issue. This is our issue. Like, how did you go from being an entrepreneur to becoming a filmmaker? Because your <laughs> background is in IT, I believe. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I have a degree in uh, engineering in computer science, and then I have a degree in finance management, uh, which I got from New um, York. And then I worked on Wall Street for three years, um, in New York Stock Exchange and Morgan Stanley and all these corporations, and I hated it. And then I successfully started my own business. I took it to over 20 countries. And then I realized everything was about money and, and you know, like coming from a middle class family, uh, do this and do that and don't do this and do that. And then I realized I, you know, I was not happy in my life and then I said to my parents that look I want to do what I want to do and I want to make a film and <laughs> they lost it completely but then they said okay uh, so I made Tailing Pond because I did not want to chase money I did not want to go commercial and you know start making money so I wanted to kind of like uh, you know give it away so I could feel some kind of peace and not associate it with money but unfortunately the second film is going to be all commercial I have to make the money <laughs> But, uh, not your telling right? <laughs> I have to, yes, I have to support it. Uh, one last question. Do you have something else in the works? I am working, I'm not, uh, I'm working on my next feature film, which is a crime drama. It is very different from what I have done. Okay. Uh, that's what I was supposed to shoot it in New York last December, but it didn't work out. I am planning again to go in this July. Uh, I have my, um, I have the DP ready. His name is Miguel Mins. And he's extremely talented guy. His last seven big films have won, uh, not won, but went to Academy Awards consideration. Uh, you can f see his films like Resistance and Hands of Stone with Robert De Niro. He's really great. I have an editor. I don't have the cast ready, but I'm working with a very good casting agent and they're trying to find some good cast for me. So let's see what happens. That's wonderful. Well, good luck uh, with your film. Thanks, sir. The word Jadugora in Hindi means enchanted land, but the magic spell is broken. The villagers have suffered for generations. The Indian government knew and did nothing. They could have prevented this human catastrophe. It's time for the government to show accountability for the human toll in Jadugora. If you would like to know more, go to www.tailingpond.com or donate at www.jadugora.com. You have been listening to a conversation with Saurabh Vishnu, the director and producer of the documentary, The Tailing Pond. This is a production of Desi Collective with Anjana and Meera. Thank you for listening.